Hello everybody, this is Troy, and today I have a video on uh, core designs, uh, how I evolve my designs over time sometimes, and this particular puzzle is my dueling tetra, and I've actually gone through several uh, revisions on it, and so it's a good one to show as an example. Now this is just a 3x3 three three, uh, uh, mod, so once we see the inside you'll see a, a more familiar 3x3 uh, three three structure. Um, and all of these are, are very similar uh, on the outside. Uh, they all look about the same. Uh, version one and two here, uh, you would have, you would not be able to tell the difference from the outside on those. And the version three also looks very similar, but it is slightly smaller. Um, it doesn't look like much here, but it actually is quite a bit when you're holding it. Uh, this one is the snap core design, and it is also, uh, in addition to different proportions, uh, it's it's also a 50 millimeter so it's much smaller uh, in size but the different proportions make these edge pieces right here much uh, shorter than what you see on the other other versions so let's uh, go in and, and I'll show uh, how these designs work so this was the version one uh, and I'm just gonna hide those pieces and we're gonna get a look inside here actually I'm just gonna hide this all these top pieces here <coughs> Now, all of these designs do feature uh, my cap design, which is something I've had in all of mine. That allows a cap to uh, basically just slide off sideways so you'll never have them fall off during a solve. Uh, so I'm very happy with that and the way that's worked. Uh, but inside here, here is our main mechanism, and now you can see how it uh, is a 3x3 three three if you weren't familiar before. But looking at the edge piece, you can see how square and blocky this is and looking at a corner piece uh, it's it's just cut out of that let me uh, grab here this one uh, you can just see how square and blocky that is but it's very thick and it's not gonna break and when I first started this I really wasn't sure how 3d printing process was going to work uh, if I was going to have issues uh, as it turned out I, I was playing it way safer than I really needed but uh, at the time I didn't know that so uh, my version 2 <clears throat> what I went ahead and did and we'll go back and forth between these a little bit uh, I'm just gonna go hide these top pieces again and <clears throat> one issue that I had is if you look in the center right here you can see that the corner piece actually comes into the center and so if I were to try to put a core that was not the plus core but an actual sphere in here it wouldn't fit because the corner pieces use up all the space on the inside but they don't need to uh, all this could be a hollow sphere and we could use a spherical core instead and that's one of the things that this new design changed uh, so the edge pieces have a, a much rounder look to them uh, inside and then on the corner pieces uh, they actually all hollow out to a to a sphere so that's what those look like <clears throat> and in the version 3 what I've done and I'm going to go ahead and hide these the version 3 I now on the previous versions I had made the puzzle as small as I could possibly make it and you can see that right here on my center caps uh, the piece cuts down right here right as far as I can to where my cap is and I can't make this cap any smaller because I need room for the spring and the screw and there just needs to be some room here so that is absolutely as small as I could make this without a without a redesign and that's shared on version 2 and this uses a, a core size that's about 40 millimeters this this circle uh, right here inside and that's roughly the same on both the version 1 and the version 2. On version 3, I've managed to shrink that to uh, 28 millimeters inside. And that's the circle here. And what that allows is a much deeper cut. And <clears throat> so whereas you can see here, uh, the center stocks are also um, much thicker than they have been in the previous versions. but I've also in this design removed the center stock so right here and right here where you would normally have the screw and the spring inside of it uh, what I do on the version 3 is that the spring is actually up above and that allows it to be completely free underneath uh, one problem I was having is trying to fit a washer into this uh, the 
the tolerances just weren't there and I needed to have either a very, very small washer uh, or make my edge pieces not have as much overlap, which would allow things to pop a little bit. So this solves all those problems and it actually even allows me to do a maglev core uh, because I've got a lot of room here, a very generous area for washers, for springs, for magnets, whatever I want to put in here. And I can make this even, even much larger if I need to go all the way out uh, to the edges here. Uh, so that's what's changed radically there in the center. Uh, the smaller design uh, did create a little bit of a pinch point right here between the centers. So these edges have a, a slight variation to them now in that they, they kind of go in and then they, they, they do this little move here. And then the corners, this is a part that I'm probably going to tweak on a little bit, but I'm going to have to make a sacrifice somewhere else to change this. Uh, this right here is about as thin as I want this to be. And as the one that I've made was plenty structurally sound, but as long as I can get my print lines to be going through the piece this way, the long way, everything will be fine. But if I ever need a piece where I have to print it where the print lines are going across this, I feel like this is too fragile. So I'm going to revisit this a little bit. I may see if I can beef this up a little bit. However, another downside of the version 3 core is that this corner is very small. Uh, the overlaps, uh, they just get really tiny down here, so I can't have a corner uh, that's got a large overhangs. And what I really want to do is make sure that that's not going to twist too much um, being in there. So I may still need to address the version 3 core a little bit, uh, but it does allow me to get much smaller, and that is... Um, the difference between these three cores. Now the snap core, this one is an experimental core and what it is is a core that does not use any hardware and what you have instead is so no screws or springs you just have a centerpiece uh, that has a little clip in it and it is able to just snap right into place and the core has got a little lip inside here and it fits right in. Now I've made three of these and I'm still not thrilled with the results. Um, however, they're very functional. Uh, they, they turn well. Uh, what I don't get with them is, is much in the way of, um, of any kind of corner cutting and they're, they're a little catchy and grabby because there's no, uh, there isn't the spring force that you really need for a good puzzle. So uh, they're a bit of an experiment to see about making just a, a cheap puzzle and, and just see what could be done. Uh, but as of right now, I haven't uh, released any of these just because I'm, I'm not completely happy with those designs. But this is very similar to the version 2, uh, kind of a cross between the version 2 and the version 3 because I did need to narrow down here like this a little bit, uh, but not on the edge. Um, and so there you go. Uh, those are the four cores that I have used on the Dueling Tetra. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, for those of you that have followed me through this long, if you are not aware, I do have an Instagram account and most of my new information goes up on the Instagram account first. So uh, I would encourage you if, you, if you like this kind of information, to uh, look me up on Instagram. And uh, I will try to get some new content out soon. I'm working on a SPAX video. Uh, it's just showing how those turn. And uh, as always, if there's any topics that you'd like to see more of, uh, let me know in the comments and I will do what I can. So thank you very much.